Frymaster's Filter Quick 120 is a large tube fryer designed to cook bone-in chicken that's being rolled out to Popeyes in the coming weeks. Two batteries, two 3 vats, or a 3 and 2 vat model are to be installed. The unit is large and the first order of business will be how to fit it into the store with the least difficulty. Remove the filter pan to ease movement of the fryer. If there's not a restaurant door that's at least 42 inches wide, components of the fryer may need to be removed to move it into the store. The gas manifold on the rear of the fryer can be removed. Junctions are accessible outside the cabinet. Also, the sheet metal back pieces can be removed, gaining several inches of clearance. Don't remove the front bezel and controllers. The fryer is also heavy, 900 pounds. A lift device may be necessary. Two fryer batteries will be marked left and right. It's important they be placed in the store in these positions under the hood. How the vats are topped off and the arrangement of the vats menu items are set by the placement of the batteries. The fryer is topped off manually. Oil is scooped from one vat to the next. In most instances, the far right vat is number six and will only get fresh solid shortening. Other vats are topped off right to left from the adjacent vat. The correct movement of the top off oil is dependent on correct placement of the fryer batteries in the store. The vats are large and hold 120 pounds of shortening. The pots are populated with a high limit, temperature probe, a float switch, an automatic intermittent filter probe, and a top off probe. Most of the circuit boards integral to the fryer's operation are behind the controllers. Two screws hold the controllers in place. They can be lifted from the bezel. The RJ45 plug attaching the controller to the smart interface board should be unplugged to prevent undue stress on the board from movement of the controller. A lanyard prevents the controller from dropping away from the bezel. A smart interface board, or SIB, is in the panel behind each controller. To access other components in the box, the bezel should be removed. It's held in place with screws at the bottom. Inside this box, there is a spark module, a 12 VDC relay, resettable high limit, and a 3.5 second time delay board. All the control boxes contain these components. There will be more about the time delay board later in this video. The middle control box includes a KCCM communication board and a small wireless modem that connects the fryer to the internet. The far left control box includes the filter interface board, which distributes 24 VDC to the valve interface board and related actuators and the communication board. The VIB provides 24 VDC to the time delay relay. The SIB, which takes in 24 VAC and converts it to DC voltage, can be tested with needle tip test probes and by watching its LEDs. 12 VDC powers the latch and heat relays and the melt cycle relay. It uses 5 VDC for sensing and 3.3 for the processor. The fryer's transformer box under the leftmost door on the 3 vat model and under the left side on the 2 vat models is accessible by removing the screws on the front and removing the 7 16 nut on the 3 vat model. In addition to 24 VAC transformers, the box contains the 24 VDC power supply. There's also the filter pump relay, which is DC, and the fryer reset relay. Under the right side of the rightmost battery is the oil quality sensor. It measures particles suspended in the oil as it's filtered and reports when it should be changed. The FilterQuick 4000 touchscreen controller can be used during troubleshooting. Carefully attach it to the cabinetry. With it in place, the fryer can be tested. A successful ignition is visible through the observation ports at the front of the fryer. A diagnostic screen, accessible in tech mode, allows pumps, relays, and valves to be tested. The software screen, available with the press of the question mark, shows version numbers and the temperature of the three probes in the fry pot. Both are useful diagnostic tools. Wide differences in the displayed probe temperatures can point to probe problems, assuming all probes are in the oil. Mismatched software versions can cause problems. 
The fryer takes a unique approach to ridding the vat bottom of heavy breading debris during filtering. Three return valves open, one after the other, forcing debris out of the vat. The center of the pot is cleared first. Then debris on either side is forced out as side return valves open and oil flows across the fry pot. The flow is achieved with three valves operated by rotary actuators on the underside of the fry pot. The 24 VDC to operate the actuators comes from the power supply and is directed by the valve interface board, which is visible in the middle of the photo. The fryer is also specially adapted to use solid shortening. The mandatory melt cycle is launched when the fryer is turned on below 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Power for this on and off heating comes from the SIB. 12 VDC closes the relay, which sends 24 VAC to the spark module. The, the module then sends 24 VAC to the gas valve. When the fryer reaches 180 degrees Fahrenheit, the control of heating is turned over to another circuit, which has a float switch. 24 VDC closes the time delay relay when the float switch is closed by liquid oil. Three and one half seconds later, AC voltage is provided to the spark module. The delay ensures the float is stable, not closing and opening the circuit while bobbing on oil. The float switch can be held down by shortening during a cold start and the fryer won't heat past 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This is easily remedied by stirring the oil in the vat or lifting the stuck float. The heavy breading and neglect from the restaurant staff can contribute to problems with the fryer. The fryer attempts to overcome some neglect. Oil returning slowly to the vat after a filter will produce a screen warning to clean the filter leaf. Oil below the AIF probe will produce a screen warning about low oil and will lock out filtering and cooking for 10 minutes. Cooking can resume after 10 minutes, but filtering will remain locked out. 